All right, all right. Hey, good morning, uh, Select Chicago, and thanks for everybody who is willing to kind of get up uh, and join us this morning. I'm Michael Murtis with the Village of Arlington Heights. I'm joined on this panel with Roy Witherell representing Lake Zurich, Illinois, and also we have live on camera Sandra Zellner. She represents uh, Park Forest, Illinois, in the south suburbs. And so uh, this is another, if you joined us in sort of the first Select Chicago event, we did a section called Local Flavors, and that was sort of a summary of what different communities in the greater Chicago region do, what their assets are, uh, what we're looking to do in terms of partnership with foreign direct investment. And I think kind of maybe just to start off, the three of us maybe will give a 30-second overview of our communities so you can kind of understand where we are and what encompasses us. So if it's all right, Roy, I'm going to turn over to you to talk about Lake Zurich. Uh, sure. Thank you, Michael. Uh, again, uh, thank you for the invitation to be here and talk a little bit about uh, the Lake Zurich community. Uh, we are a uh, northwestern suburb, uh, about 20,000 people. Within a 15-minute range, we're probably 165,000 people. We have a very strong retail uh, component on Rand Road. Uh, we also have a, a very high-tech industrial park that encompasses about 20% of the, uh, the village of Lake Zurich. We have uh, two of our largest corporations, our manufacturers, uh, French-owned and Japanese-owned subsidiaries in uh, the industrial park. So uh, we are well represented, I think, by the international community. Uh, we have a very highly educated, highly skilled workforce. Uh, over 55% of our residents hold a bachelor's degree, about 30% hold a graduate or professional degree. So I think we, but we, uh, and we also have a very uh, a family friendly, a for, uh, family affordable uh, place to call home and to do your business. And I look forward to working with my colleagues and talking with my colleagues about their communities to, uh, this morning as well. Yeah, great. Thanks, Roy. How about Sandra? Can I turn it over to you to talk about Park Forest? Sure. Good morning, everyone. I'm sitting in Park Forest today, but I'm representing a coalition of five communities known as the Will Cook Enterprise Zone. Um, we affiliated with each other back in 2015, and I'm representing Moni, University Park, Richton Park, Matteson, and Park Forest. And so we cross two counties, Will County and Cook County, and we have an unincorporated area. And together in our Will Cook Enterprise Zone, we have about 15 miles or 39 square kilometers that we're looking to develop and redevelop. Our five communities are known for tailgating, barbecues, festivals, farmers markets, um, easy access to the Indiana Dunes, the Kankakee State Park. Um, people who reside in our five suburbs um, really appreciate the outdoor and clean air. Um, we've got wonderful public schools, a charter school, um, great high schools, and um, we're served by Governor State University and University Park and Prairie State College in Chicago Heights. Um, we're a great place to live and, and raise a family. Um, we have homes dating from the 1880s in some of the smaller communities to modern homes. Um, it's easy to rent in Park Forest or Matteson. Um, and Richton Park. And so anyone that's looking for a lifestyle that has proximity to the city of Chicago, um, we real highly recommend looking at our South Suburban area. And again, I appreciate being here today with Arlington Heights and Lake Zurich. Great, yeah, thanks Sandra, appreciate that. Just to kind of speak on behalf of my community, Arlington Heights, we are a Northwest suburb that's about 45 minutes by train to the Chicago Loop. We have approximately 76,000 residents, which makes us the 13th largest municipality in the entire state of Illinois and the third largest in Cook County as well. Our average household income is about $115,000 per year. We have very diverse housing stock, everything from sort of downtown condominium living all the way to large single family lots. So a very diverse lifestyle that we can offer within Arlington Heights as well. We have uh, approximately uh, 3,000 businesses and approximately 45,000 workers during the daytime in Arlington Heights. So we're one of the largest business centers in the entire Chicago area. And one of our key assets is our location, our access throughout the Chicago region. As I mentioned before, via Metro, which is Chicago's commuter rail system, we have two stations that again can get you from Arlington Heights to downtown Chicago in under an hour. We also have commercial rail. Union Pacific operates an industrial rail line that numerous businesses still utilize as an alternative to truck traffic. But speaking of traffic, 
we're connected to three interstate highways that allow us access not just to Chicago, but throughout the entire region very easily. And one other thing, too, in terms of connectivity, we're within 15 to 20 minute drive of both Chicago O'Hare International Airport and Chicago Executive Airport, which kind of emphasizes us as a place to do business. And that sort of leads into a quality of life discussion that I wanted to talk to both Roy and Sandra about that both of them have kind of alluded to at this point. But I wanted to see, is there anything in terms of quality of life that you would like to add in just the region in general that you're representing today? Sure, be happy to. Um, in terms of quality of life issues, uh, we are very uh, cognizant of uh, resident and business input, and we survey our residents and our businesses on a very frequent basis. And every other year, we, uh, we hire an independent agency to do a completely uh, quantitative analysis of the uh, residents' opinions and their, their, what they like about living in Lake Zurich. And what we consistently hear through all these uh, surveys that we do is that Lake Zurich is a very family-friendly, family-focused, family-affordable community. Uh, and constantly talk about the sense of community, the sense of a hometown feel. Uh, and these are the residents and the businesses telling us how they, uh, how they rate Lake Zurich and its, uh, its quality of life. Very, very safe community. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, later in the, uh, this morning. But uh, that they consistently rank uh, Lake Zurich as one of the reasons that they live there is, is, is the safety issue. Uh, education, school, uh, Lake Zurich District 95 and Stevenson High School, our Stevenson school system uh, interconnect in Lake Zurich. They're consistently ranked in the uh, top 5% in Illinois. And uh, so it is a very, very uh, good place to raise children with a very, very high quality education. And they consistently talk about the natural environment, the open space, and of course our namesake, Lake Zurich. Uh, it is a very, I think, uh, green, open space, mm, all kinds of uh, opportunities in terms of lake, our park systems, our jogging trails, and our bike paths. So that's what we hear from our residents and our businesses right straight from you know, the people that matter. So about the, what they gauge the quality of life to be in Lake Zurich. Great, all right, can I get it back to Sandra? Yeah, thank you. I think we had a little bit of an interruption there earlier. Um, Park Forest and Matteson and Richton Park um, and University Park are served by four metro rail stations uh, along the metro electric line. So there is easy access to the universities on the south side of the city of Chicago and to the museum complex. Um, again, we have I-57, um, which is a, a corridor that um, makes it very attractive and easy to get around the greater metro area and um, Park Forest residents and Matteson residents and Moni and Richton Park and University Park residents all say that um, in their community surveys, um, they've responded that the quality of life living in our suburbs, um, is they highly rate living in their communities and the public services that they receive, everything from good roads, clean air, um, safe neighborhoods, um, high construction quality, um, well out, laid, laid out neighborhoods. In fact, um, our communities require um, when subdivisions are developed that parks are set aside and that there are set asides for contributions to the public school system. So that's something that's highly um, valued in, in our communities. Um, University Park has a small fishing lake um, that's near Governor State University that has an internationally renowned walking and art trail, the Nathan Manalo Sculpture Park. Um, our communities have several um, live action um, theater programs that are public-private partnerships that um, host a, a series of um, original theater um, and that they also participate in the international film festivals. Um, we have got several different types of outdoor festivals, everything from brew fests, blues fests, um, international food festivals and Park Forest is the um, host to the longest running um, farmers market in the, the south suburbs. Uh, we're connected in, um, along the Old Plank Trail. So there is a 26 mile bike path that connects Joliet to Northwest Indiana. Um, it's very, all of our communities are, are safe and um, have low crime rates um, comparatively. And um, it's just, our tree canopy, uh, the, again, the clean natural air 
and our environment are, are things that the residents and the businesses in our five communities highly value. Great, thanks, Sandra. Yeah, Arlington Heights too, of course, takes tremendous pride in its quality of life. And I already pointed out the importance of our location and access. For example, people who want to work in downtown Chicago but live away from it can do that. And vice versa, the, the Metro line provides a lot of people who live in Chicago that come out to Arlington Heights. A few other elements of quality of life that makes Arlington Heights, we feel, particularly exceptional is one healthcare. Our healthcare industry continues to grow. Approximately one in every four people who work in Arlington Heights work in the healthcare industry. And the big reason for that is Northwest Community Hospital, which U.S. News and World Reports ranked as one of the 20 best hospitals in the entire state, has a continuously growing and thriving presence in our community. In addition to that, our library, the Arlington Heights Memorial Library, is one of the highest ranked libraries of its size in the entire country. Case in point, the Library Journal gave the Arlington Heights Memorial Library a five-star ranking nine years in a row, which is something that only about 15 or 20 libraries in the entire country have received. So it's a tremendous social uh, and educational focal point within our community. And another thing is in terms of parks and recreation. Our park district owns, operates, and maintains 40, 45 public parks and recreation facilities, obviously anything from swimming, tennis, and golf, to just open space in general. And one thing I kind of want to lead into a conversation from this that I think maybe those of us who are joining us from outside the United States is, what's your international footprint within your community? And speaking on behalf of Arlington Heights, approximately 19% per the U.S. Census Bureau estimate that one in every five residents in Arlington Heights was actually born outside the country. And so their footprint is seen in the various businesses we have in the community, but also in the companies that have invested in Arlington Heights as well. One example I can give, HSBC is one of the world's largest banking and financial firms based in London, England. And they consolidated operations about four or five years ago in terms of the Chicago region into Arlington Heights, bringing in one, um, pardon me, bringing in 1,500 workers to the village of Arlington Heights. Other examples, we have a German-based company called Vitron, W-I-T-R-O-N, continues to grow their footprint in our community and reinvest in new facilities. They do software and logistics for warehousing for companies around the world. And we also have several Japanese companies that have invested and continue to do so in Arlington Heights. One that comes to mind is Nippon Shario, which is a company that designs and produces rail cars, like for example, the Metra system and other rail systems throughout the world. Their administrative office for the US is based in Arlington Heights, um, as well as a company called JTECT Toyota, not the auto manufacturer, but the machine parts manufacturer. T-O-Y-O-D-A, but they have an extended footprint in Arlington Heights where they conduct their manufacturing operations as well. And I kind of want to tap into the impact that an international presence has had on our other two communities here. So if Roy, I could turn that over to you. Sure, be happy to. Thank you, Michael. Uh, in fact, two of our largest uh, five employers in, in our industrial park uh, our foreign-owned subsidiaries, uh, Echo Incorporated is our largest employer, uh, well over 800 people, probably approaching 1,000. They're owned by the Yamabiko Corporation of Japan. And at Termex Industries, which is a French-owned subsidiary of Lissy Automotive, uh, they're also in the top five, and I think they're about 500 employees. And both of these companies have been in Lake Zurich for, for several decades. And probably in the last five years, they have expanded their facilities. Echo grew their corporate headquarters, probably, I think, about 150,000 square feet. Uh, Termax did the same. So uh, we're very proud to have our Japanese and our French uh, friends with us. Uh, and in terms of you know, uh, an international president, a presence, we we're very fortunate to receive a visit from the new Consul General of Japan uh, this past January. Uh, the first community or municipality he chose to visit was Lake Zurich, simply because he wanted to, talk, to see Lake Zurich Echo Industries, 
uh, tour the plant and talk to the uh, the CEO and the board there about why they chose Lake Zurich. So we uh, we're very happy to be part of the international presence in Illinois. Great, thanks, Roy. How about you, Sandra? Anything you'd like to add to that? Um, the Chinese Foreign Trade uh, Minister for Agriculture has visited the village of Park Forest, and um, a coalition of owners from. Australia and China um, have started a business for bio industries in Park Forest. And then most recently, we've seen a trend of companies um, that border the Adriatic Sea with representatives from Croatia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Macedonia, Slovenia, and Italy um, locating their businesses in Park Forest. And perhaps the largest is an Italian company, Agrati Corporation, and they manufacture screws and um, um, anything that would be produced that would go into any kind of a vehicle with wheels. So I guarantee if you're, whatever you're driving in the United States or around the world, there's likely a part that was made by the Agrati Industries in, in your vehicle. Great, thanks Sandra. You know, I think if there are companies out there who are looking to invest in our communities and potentially relocate people to our communities, I think they're gonna want to know two things. One, is it safe for my family? And two, are my children going to be able to get a good education? And I think maybe this is a good opportunity to, for maybe companies or investors who are looking to come to one of our municipalities, what can we tell them about individually education and safety in our areas? So speaking from Park Forest, um, elementary school kids and middle school youth still walk to school. Um, we have crossing guards. And um, there, it's a safe, walkable, really friendly community. Um, Park Forest, for instance, um, had the outdoor um, Central Park um, baseball fields had lights at their at the Park Diamonds before um, Wrigley Field even had outdoor lights. And so there's a strong commitment um, to youth and youth development, and um, it's just incredibly family oriented. Um, there all kinds of ways to, um, to enrich the lives of children, youth, and, and teens and preteens um, in all five of our communities. Uh, the village of Matteson has an incredible recreation complex, has an indoor swimming pool, um, all kinds of classes, um, Park Forest and Moni and Richland Park as well. Um, every kind of activity that you could imagine that you would want your child to know something about that may not be taught in a public school or the charter school or um, one of the faith-based schools is accessible through our parks and recreation programs. And um, the vitality, when I'm here after hours, um, eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night, there's still activity in, in our suburban communities. We didn't just roll up the carpet and close. Um, we're kind of, our, our metro area, um, is just really um, welcoming. Um, most of each, of, many of our communities have community relations directors um, that work on facilitating activities with private industry and sponsorship for um, all kinds of events that draw people not only from our immediate community but from outside the area. Um, we have had a wine and chocolate festival that brings people um, from as far away as Indiana and people who have families in Park Forest have brought friends from California and Nebraska and other places um, to enjoy the wine festival here. Terrific. How about you, Roy? Uh, <clears throat> as I mentioned previously, uh, one of the consistent uh, high marks we get and why people chose to live in Lake Zurich or do business in Lake Zurich is, the, is safety. That probably ranks in our top five reasons living in Lake Zurich. I mean, our crime rate's less than 23% of the Illinois and the national crime rate. It's just not an issue in Lake Zurich. Uh, we're a family, like I said, of neighborhoods. Uh, I see, you know, kids and tweens riding under their group of their bicycles unsupervised because I think the feeling is in Lake Zurich it is safe. Uh, our, our Police department is CALEA accredited, which very few police departments in the in the in the country uh, are. Uh, we are very highly trained in terms of community interactivity. Uh, our police, we get um, we get uh, accommodations and acclimations from our residents. I would say just about every week, thanking our police department for the incredible job they do and the outreach the outreach they do with uh, the youth of the community. I'd like to speak just a little extra about uh, the Chicago region mm -hmm. and the city of Chicago. Uh, the, it's got a bad rap. I, I've lived in Chicago for almost 19 years, and it's like any big city. You just have to be aware. You have to be conscientious of where you're going and your surroundings, and that's in any neighborhood. 
traditionally, historically, the issues have been uh, centralized in a few, um, few problematic wards and neighborhoods. Uh, I think because of the, the, the environment we're in right now, uh, it, uh, it made a good visual. The bridges came up, you know, it was like the, the moat is inaccessible. And I think, unfortunately, uh, there were some uh, energies focused on the image of Chicago. But like I said, and, and Michael, you live in Chicago, mm -hmm, too. Mm -hmm. I've never yeah. really felt unsafe in, in Chicago. Yeah, no, I've lived in Chicago now for about eight years. And uh, it, it, common sense goes a long way. But the other thing, too, is when we're talking about Chicago, Chicago is a very extended region. And as you alluded to, Roy, is um, certain trouble spots that have had um, issues for a long time for various reasons. Um, unfortunately, the whole city is often judged by that, and that's kind of an unfair perception. And on the whole, the whole Chicago region is a very safe area where the great bulk of people that I know and associate with have never had any issues in regards to crime. Um, but in speaking of that from just my specific municipality, Arlington Heights, safewise.com ranked Arlington Heights last year as one of the 50 safest municipalities in the entire state of Illinois. And one thing I wanted to add, too, in terms of safety is our fire department. Um, it has an ISO rating of 1. And that is a designation from the federal government that less than 1% of fire departments get and reflects everything from personnel to equipment to communication to response time. So in terms of protection for our residents, for our visitors, and for our businesses, it's extraordinarily high in Arlington Heights. But the Chicago region as a whole, um, I think you shouldn't be deceived by um, impressions that a lot of people who don't spend much time here actually have, and you should come and see it for yourself if you haven't. Um, in addition to that, though, I did want to talk a little bit more about education. The U.S. Department of Education hands out to the state of Illinois approximately 20 Blue Ribbon Awards every year, which is the highest individual ranking a school can get from the United States Department of Education. And in the past 10 years, five different Arlington Heights schools have received this designation, which just goes to show you if every other year in Arlington Heights School is getting this designation, it sort of complements the investment that the community has in the various levels of education. For example, too, John Hersey High School, which is the high school within Arlington Heights, the public high school. Uh, U.S. News & World Report ranked it the eighth best public high school in the entire Chicago area. And the other various high schools that Arlington Heights residents go to all typically fall within the top 40 or top 50 of the entire region. So in addition to that, for higher education, Robert Morris University also has a campus in Arlington Heights. So for those who may be looking to continue their education but don't want to go to downtown Chicago or to a larger university that may be outside the Chicago area, we have an alternative for that in our community as well. And I think kind of one more quality of life thing that I want to tap into from both Roy and Sandra too, any other amenities we missed, anything else that maybe distinguishes your community or communities from the rest of the Chicago region? And maybe I'll go back to Roy on this one if that's okay. Thank you, Michael. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, besides the lake, which is one of our major obvious mm -hmm. uh, amenities, uh, we, uh, we are very uh, community events oriented. We hold for a city or a village of 20,000 people, 45 community events every year. Um, we have a, uh, a rock festival in our Main Street area, which is uh, three live rock bands on a Saturday night, usually in the middle of September. Uh, we have you know, holiday events in our, our crossroads in our Main Street area. And we have a great park and recreation program. We don't have a park district. The parks is, and recreation program is a department of Lake Zurich. Uh, we have 31 parks. Uh, we actually have a beer garden in one of our park on the, parks on the lake that the village owns and then contracts it out to be ran. We have an arboretum, which is very popular. We have two public beaches. Uh, and we have over 650 programs for our residents and our neighbors. So for a, a village the size of Lake Zurich, I think that's really quite incredible. And we are <clears throat> in the middle of a, a renaissance of our downtown. We call it our Main Street area. It's, it's the old downtown of Lake Zurich. Um, but within the last six months, excuse me, <clears throat> 
we have had five businesses, uh, restaurants, that are planning to relocate in lay down in our Main Street area. Uh, a Mexican ice cream place, a uh, keto-friendly wine bar and cafe, a new Korean barbecue place, and probably a new seafood restaurant place, uh, all opening up in Lake, downtown Main Street, Lake Zurich. So I think those amenities and our green space and our lake and just um, you know, over 60 restaurants in, a, in a, an area of 20,000 people, I think those are some uh, very uh, attractive amenities to um, residents and visitors. Thank right. you. Yeah, thanks, Roy. How about Sandra? Anything else you wanted to add to that? Sure. So um, the Village of Park Forest actually hosts Freedom Hall, um, which is a um, small, intimate venue that has senior live theater, youth live theater, and um, then a, a progressive evening theater um, that's family oriented. And as Roy mentioned, um, we too have had a renaissance of um, food in our community despite COVID. Um, we've had seven um, coast kitchens open during um, the last eight months. Everything um, from Korean barbecue and egg rolls um, to um, different pastries, um, bunt cakes, pound cake types, um, specialty cupcakes, um, Louisiana fair, Cajun fair, um, pizza, uh, uh, pizza place. And so um, despite what's happening um, with, with COVID, there's still an interest in, in um, small eating establishments um, opening in our communities. Mm -hmm. So I want to echo um, what Roy said there. And our main streets and the five communities that are in the um, Will Cook Enterprise Zone are very vibrant. Um, Moniz Main Street has an antique district um, that, that draws um, from a number of states, um, they, and they host festivals. University Park, uh, because of having Governor State University there, um, they are very fortunate to um, have a student body that's 20% international with the largest um, portion of students coming from India. And um, we're just, a vibe, between, the, between the five of us and our 65,000 residents, we're just incredibly vibrant, really accessible and very open-minded. Great. Thanks, Sandra. Yeah, a few more amenities I wanted to talk about in terms of Arlington Heights. Uh, one is our award-winning downtown, which has over 200 businesses, 30 of which are unique boutique retail stores, over 30 of which are unique restaurants and eateries as well. We also have an anchor in the Metropolis Performing Arts Center, which is a 300-seat intimate venue to see live theater, music, or comedy as well. And they recently got a new marquee installed help them continue to be an asset to our downtown. Arlington International Racecourse is one of the premier thoroughbred racing tracks in the entire country. They recently just announced the racing schedule for 2021. And one other major destination, Arlington Heights, Mitsuwa Marketplace is the largest Japanese grocer not on either coast in the country, and that's located in Arlington Heights and is a huge draw throughout the region, even throughout the Midwest as well. So lots of amenities, lots of unique downtowns in our communities, and I think that really kind of helps distinguish us as well. So we're here now speaking on behalf of Select Chicago, and maybe the question is, so why are you involved with Select Chicago? Why have your communities joined this organization, and what are the benefits that you're seeing? Uh, there are various reasons why. Uh, you know, when it comes to my mind immediately, the word I look for is connectivity, and I'll kind of elaborate that in a second, but maybe if it's all right, Sandra, do you have any thoughts about uh, your role in Select Chicago and how that benefits the communities you Sure. Um, being the steering committee member representing the Will Cook Enterprise Zone, um, I was somewhat familiar with the, my immediate area, but because of Select Chicago, I now have a connection to Northwest Indiana um, and have a friend, Clarence Hulse, there now, who represents Michigan City. And um, this past year, um, Roy with Lake Zurich really helped me out with um, making a connection to a developer for uh, apartments. They have an incredible new apartment complex that's built near um, in their downtown. And I was um, concerned with our market study for apartments in Park Forest and was able to connect with Roy and getting a reference for that developer there. And I don't think I would have been able to make that connection but for being affiliated with Select Chicago. So not only has it helped me with the international connections, it has also helped me with our, our local connections. 
And I would I'd like to echo that, Sandy, uh, or Sandra. Uh, <clears throat> I think Leslie Murphy, our colleague from Skokie, often talks about the value of uh, being a select uh, Chicago community. Uh, Skokie is very into the, the pharmaceutical uh, production type of um, manufacturing and research. Uh, and I think it was Vetter that was looking to move to Skokie several years ago, and uh, it, unfortunately it did not turn out for Skokie. I think they went to Des Plaines. But uh, Leslie was very happy at least to have them in the region. Uh, so what, uh, and then she always comments about what benefits one of the uh, Select Chicago members uh, benefits the region. And I think Leslie makes a very good point with that. And I would just like to kind of talk about, too, if it were not for like Zurich's participation in Select Chicago, we would never have met the Consul General of Japan. Mm -hmm. We met him at a reception uh, well, a year ago in the fall. And I think that was, uh, he, we, we had a good conversation with him. Uh, he came out and visited. And probably, uh, oh, maybe three months ago, we got contacted by the Jethro, which is a Jap Japan external trade organization uh, for a manufacturing facility that is looking to move from automotive manufacturing into PPE manufacturing, and they were interested in Lake Zurich. So if it had not been for our community or participation in Select Chicago, that would never have happened. Yeah. So it is, you know, I, that, that's just one of the few benefits. Uh, uh, I think of, of membership in this this organization. Yeah, I mentioned before connectivity, and I think what I mean by that in kind of three regards. One is typically in our economic development role, our audience tends to be primarily local or regional, and Select Chicago has given us a channel to meet potential investors from around the globe, not just even nationally, and that's a channel we otherwise would typically not have outside of this organization. Secondly, it allows us to, if you are the investor, typically your approvals and your permits and your sort of end of business thing uh, comes through the municipality, comes through the communities. And that's why it's critically important to get in at the very front and make that initial introduction so that Roy or Sandra or any of my counterparts can guide you all the way through the process beginning to end so that you can maintain your timeline. Third thing is that economic developers in a lot of ways were sort of jacks of all trades and masters of none. We have all kinds of different experience, but in terms of, for example, legal expertise, getting a visa or getting a green card, for example, or even how to break into the U.S. market if you've never done that before are things that we typically don't have the expertise in that Select Chicago can connect you with and allow us to work with you to make sure that the process is as smooth as possible. You know, one other thing, Sandra, I wanted to ask you too. Did you do a community tour through Chicago, Select Chicago recently? Did and um, we were fortunate to have um, a representative from the uh, Turkish Trade um, Group come to Park Forest, and I'm not sure if it's directly related, but ten months later, um, a Turkish um, company purchased a property in Park Forest, and they represent a Lebanese firm, and they distribute uh, men's hair care products, and uh, it was interest uh, it was an interesting um, process for us because now we've got a group of young men from Turkey who own a property in Park Forest and I've since learned that they have 1.2 million followers on Instagram and being the age that I am Instagram wasn't something that I was familiar with but when I was hosting the meeting for their property tax incentive and, and sharing with someone younger than me what I was doing and mentioned their business name, she flipped her phone around and said, these guys? And I was like, yes, those guys. And so I think for um, Select Chicago and our, our introduction um, to international investors, that's been a success for us as well. And it would, I don't think it would have happened without that connection, which we very much appreciate. And then as a consequence of that tour, now, the, my peers then, who are members of Select Chicago, were able to visit industries that are in the other communities, and some of them longstanding in business more than 100 years, who it turns out, while they're American-based, have affiliates in Central America and supply product worldwide. And I think once 
you get outside of your community and you see what's happening around you, it broadens your ability to see the, your context and how some a small place like Park Forest or Moni actually has a significant impact worldwide. And the belonging to Select Chicago has opened um, my eyes to that as well. Nice. That's a great tangible. If, if example. I could, yeah, yeah if I could just add one other thing. Um, we're talking about, you know, the, and when we say Select Chicago, it's with what a 300 radi mile radius of of the city. So, and, you know, it goes up to northern Wisconsin, out to Michigan, Ohio, out to, uh, to Iowa. Uh, so it, that, that's the region we're talking about when we talk Select Chicago. And I, I don't think it's any great surprise. I mean, it's, a, it's a, the, tra the transportation hub of the nation. Uh, you know, uh, we uh, have some first-class schools all the way from University of Chicago to Northwestern. And I don't want to just, my, my, my state neighbors, so University of Michigan, University of Wisconsin, and I, Indiana, state, Indiana State, I get that. Um, and uh, the cost of living, I mean, you, you go to the Bay Area, you go to LA, you go to the New York, Boston area, the Atlanta area, those are very, very expensive areas. And I think the cost of living uh, for anyone considering relocation or investing in this region, is, I think is very, very uh, a high selling point. But one thing I would also like to talk, which, which, which makes the uh, Select Chicago region above, uh, head above all the other uh, regions in the, in the country. Uh, the Consul General of Japan, when he talked about why Chicago is so important to Japan exporters and, uh, and um, investors, it's the work ethic. The Midwestern work ethic is what sells the region, and we are all community members of that Midwest, and we all have that work ethic. So I think that's probably our top selling point in, yeah, in the Midwest. That's, that's a great point, yeah. absolutely. And, and again, just as a transportation hub, the, the roadways, the railways, O'Hare and Midway Airport, uh, Chicago is great because it gives you access to the coasts and to Texas and to the northern part of the country because of its central location. So really, um, that's ideal if you're trying to ship product or simply just trying to do business throughout the country as well. So I, how are we doing on time? Do we need a, we're okay? Do we, let's, you know, let's, let's talk really quick then, uh, Sandra and Roy, about something that's critically important right now, and that's the pandemic. And I think what probably a lot of businesses would like to know is what are our communities doing for our business partners in order to try and help them get through this and keep their feet on solid ground as we hopefully get out of this sooner than later. So can I give that over to you, Roy? For sure. You know, yeah. uh, our, our top priority, of course, is the safety of our residents and our, our visitors and our businesses. So we follow state guidelines mm -hmm. for that and have through all phases up to uh, the current phase we're in. Uh, we uh, consistently communicated. We have approximately 800 businesses in Lake Zurich. Uh, I think we sent out messages and uh, contacted them at least once a week during the the very very um, the dark days of the quarantine. Uh, we were very uh, uh, willing to work with them about permitting and what. Uh, not waiving the code, but being flexible on our code about curbside pickups, that kind of thing, uh, and the the the. the uh, locations that the village own, we are very capable, we're very willing to give our tenants, our business tenants, a break. Uh, we are a member of also an economic development consortium called Lake County Partners, and they were incredibly helpful getting through the massive, massive red tape of the PPP and the CARES Act. We had businesses that would call me and say, I'm not getting anything from my bank. I've been a member of my bank for 25 years, and they're not calling me back. How do I go through this? How do I get the, the grant monies? And through our, our membership with Lake County Partners, they, call, they had targeted lending institutions that these small business, particularly the smaller businesses, just didn't have access to the big banks. And you know what? They were successful in getting the loans they needed simply because the lending institutions in Lake Zurich uh, we're, are in Lake County, we're willing to do that, and we were able to put them in contact with them and help them get the funding they needed. That's great. Yeah, how about on your end, Sandra? Uh, similar to um, Roy's experience with the Paycheck Protection Program, um, the Village of Park, I'm just going to speak about Park Forest rather than the whole Enterprise Zone. 
a park forest has 300 businesses and um, through our assistance with our partners with South Suburban Mayors and Managers and the Women's Business Development Center and Axion, 148 of the businesses successfully applied for and received paycheck protection assistance. And then we also um, worked with um, the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity on the business interruption grants and on um, the hospitality grants. And while a couple of those were awarded um, by lottery, um, one of the restaurants in Park Forest received one of the hospitality grants. And internally, um, we have our own green room in Village Hall and we have a camera system. And so we've loaned out our camera to small businesses to be able to make their own um, high quality videos. And then our economic development advisory group chairman we uh, and, and staff worked together to go to businesses to showcase what they were doing to accommodate the um, Illinois Department of Health's requirements for physical distancing. And that was one of the things that we're stressing. We are not social distancing. We are physical distancing. We still want all of the social engagement. We still want to be, to be able to go into a business and to, to still engage um, with our residents. And so Village Hall is open. We have a limited number of capacity for people to come in and we're practicing social distancing and wearing masks and we're leading by example. Um, and then we um, created a Facebook page that's very robust um, where the park forest businesses can promote themselves. Um, and, and we encourage not only park foresters, but residents from within the region and the localities to frequent park forest businesses. And one of the things that we did was um, have a cash back program and a gift program. And when people brought in their receipts from shopping in Park Forest businesses um, over the first three month time frame, we then had a lottery to give away $50 gift cards to other Park Forest businesses. And what we discovered um, was while other communities were seeing a reduction in sales tax revenue, um, Park Forest actually saw a 20% increase. In sales tax collections. The, um, I don't know if it's directly related to our efforts, um, but we really wanted to be hands-on and proactive and help the, the, the local businesses. And thankfully to this point, there isn't a business that is closed permanently. Um, we've had some reduction in time, um, and um, but, but things are going along well. Yeah, that's great, Sandra. Thank you. And uh, I just want to just add a few things about Arlington Heights, and then maybe we can jump into a Q&A if people would like to submit questions. But uh, like both your points, and extremely well said from both of you, uh, to try and help accommodate our businesses, um, providing relief in terms of waiving fees that are typically required, like liquor licensing, or even providing some delayed payments on things like hotel tax and food and beverage taxes as well. The big thing, of course, is communicating with those businesses in terms of mm -hmm. the, gr the grants, the loans, the assistance programs that were being offered at the federal level, at the state level, even at the local level as well, and just ongoing communication and trying to connect those businesses with those resources. On an individual level, Arlington Heights made a concerted effort to allow restaurants to expand their dining into private areas, or in the case of our downtown, we closed off several streets to allow the restaurants to expand their dining into the streets. We closed it off for pedestrians only to sort of try and give it a plaza-like feel that you might see in Europe, for example. Um, still maintaining the required distancing and the mask wearing that the state mandated it as well. And it was a great success that brought a lot of people to downtown to eat safely um, and encourage people to support the restaurants and keep them going through this difficult time as well since their indoor capacity was limited. And just really quick too, Arlington Heights set aside money to do an interest-free loan that we awarded 18 businesses $10,000, again, interest-free, that could be repaid over three years as well as a way to kind of help them carry out of this and into what's hopefully a semblance of normalcy soon. So um, that kind of covers a lot of, I think, what we wanted to talk about today. But if anybody has any questions that they want to submit online, uh, now is probably a good time for that. Yeah, I have the first one. And I'm going to go to all, all three of you since each of you are in different counties. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things what we get when people are talking to Select Chicago is access to training through local mm -hmm. junior colleges or local tech campuses. 
Uh, I'm going to throw it first to Sandra and say, what types of training opportunities are available that businesses that are coming in can uh, extend to the local JC and the local university? So um, OAI, uh, uh, it's a training program that's in 20 different states across the United States, has an office in Park Forest, and um, they train employees in a number of different categories, everything from nursing and healthcare, OSHA standards, um, workplace safety, and um, they are enabled to um, place um, workers that are re being retrained that have recently lost jobs or who are in the 18 to 24 year old category who are currently underemployed in paid internship and apprenticeship programs um, in the south suburbs. And um, Prairie State College recently received a grant from the US Economic Development Administration to outfit two 18 wheel trucks with training centers that are mobile um, for CNC training. And so um, industries that are unable to have the workforce training on their own facilities or campuses and are not able to send students to the community college campus can now have a mobile campus come to them for hands-on training. Um, we've, um, we've also encouraged the, the industries and in our five community coalition to participate with the South Suburban Economic Development Commission and they do something called a robotics competition. So we ha now have high school students who are trained um, before they graduate from high school with a certificate to be able to enter uh, jobs that are in our local economy and to fill positions through this apprenticeship program that the CSCDC sponsors. Great, how about you, Roy? Um, yeah, we, uh, the, the, I, I, Lake Zurich is uh, located in Lake County. It's the third largest um, county in the, uh, the state. Uh, the College of Lake County is very, very geared toward training, the training needs of local businesses, anywhere from the, the one person, you know, back of the, the building shop uh, person, all the way up to uh, 10 of the uh, top corporate or Fortune 100 companies are located in Lake County. They participate in it too. They look to the College of Lake County for their need, some of their training needs. Uh, they uh, they will set up custom training. They will come out and they will talk to the individual proprietor all the way up to the head of training of AbV or Walgreens uh, to tailor made it needs what is specifically as necessary for your company. And it's very very cost effective. I just learned this yesterday. It's like sixty cents per student per month, and <laughs> which you can't beat that kind of training. And you have a lot of the the uh, professional corporate people from s some of those Fortune 100 companies come in and as a sense of, uh, a sense of uh, community responsibility provide those kind of training opportunities. And it's everything uh, from truck driving to forklift uh, mechanics to robotics to food safety. They offer all kinds of uh, training opportunities in, in, uh, for, Lake Zur or for Lake, yeah, Lake Zurich businesses and Lake, Lake uh, County businesses in general. So uh, yeah, they're very, very, uh, and they've been doing this for decades. So. Yeah, great. Just a couple things in terms of Arlington Heights. Uh, Harper College is the community college that serves Arlington Heights residents as well. They have numerous training programs either for certifications or for associate's degrees, especially for businesses in the manufacturing, warehousing, distribution, uh, area as well too, uh, and those programs are usually either free or low cost. Additionally, the Illinois Department of Employment Security, IDES, operates an office in Arlington Heights as well. They s have significant involvement in terms of placing people who either need further education or strictly just job placement based upon their skills as well. And for those who are more, say, entrepreneurial, the Small Business Development Center at Harper College offers a ton of free things from doing a business plan to uh, doing marketing to putting together a financial strategy. Um, so these are all things that businesses small and large can take advantage of either free or at a very low cost as well. Great. Great. I think we have time for one last question. Great. You guys have been really great today. And I think all of the members of the Select Chicago Steering Committee really bought into the concept of proactive economic development. Mm. And I guess the question I have for each of you 
and then we'll wrap it at that point, is what are some of those proactive economic development steps like business retention visits mm. or taking the temperature of your business climate? So figure out one of them that you do that really talks about once a business is landed in mm. your town, how does the town help embrace them beyond the sale, beyond what they're here, sure. how do we retain them? Yeah, you know, if I can start, just to me, business retention is the most critical element of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Because now that we have you, how can we help you grow and thrive? It's not just enough to pat ourselves on the back and say, okay, you're here, now we can move on to the next attractive business. It's ongoing communication, and it's a two-way street, too, making sure you're letting us know, well, we're looking to do this expansion. What do we need in terms of permits? We're trying to educate our workers. Who can we connect with? We are very much resource connectors. If you don't know where to go, we can either tell you or find out and put you in touch with that entity to make sure that you are growing in the most efficient and most cost affordable way. That would be my take on business retention. I, uh, how about Roy, you wanna talk? Uh, yeah, I think communication and building relationships uh, is critical. Mm -hmm. um, I think retention sometimes takes a back seat to recruitment. Mm -hmm. and, you know, once you got them, okay, then let the, let the, 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 the company, the manufacturer, or the, or the retailer, then you forget about them. You cannot do that. The retention is just as important as recruitment. And I think it's through relationship building, frequent call-ins, frequent visits. Uh, our, our mayor will stop in to any of our manufacturers or businesses, I bet, on a weekly basis. And how's it going? What do you need? Uh, here's Roy's card, call him if you need anything. And it's the, and I probably get those calls probably several times a week. So I think it's that the building of relationships, the building, the building of trust uh, to, you know, hold, you know, some things confidential and close to the vest until it's time to talk about them. Uh, and just checking in, and uh, to your point, uh, if they are expanding, if they need some some kind of permit processing you know, to make sure that they get it quickly and easily and as effortlessly, effortlessly as possible. Great. So, mm -hmm. so in Park Forest, we host quarterly business breakfasts, um, and we have the topics based on um, surveys that we do of our business community. So everything from accounting, permitting, um, social engagement, website development, um, understanding the real estate market, um, business to business activities. Um, we try to um, provide ac educational speakers um, that are responding to topics that the local community has asked for. And then on the small scale, I've actually found myself driving a solopreneur or an entrepreneur to a class and being that person's champion in the car, getting there and then on the way back. And then I have found myself going to the Women's Business Development Center with a, a mom who's in between jobs to help her with her business plan and market analysis. And then on the big scale, working with um, the Chinese Agriculture Secretary on un understanding um, the process for patents for a, a product in our community and developing the relationship um, with the food safety handling programs at the, um, the colleges um, in the area. And so the, the scale is every, everything from the small individual up to the multi-million dollar corporation. And as Roy said, and I, I think one of the things that I learned early on in my career, it's easy to flirt, but it's harder to stay married. And um, the details, the day-to-day, -day, the people who you see, um, their needs are the ones that we're responsive to. And uh, it's, and I think that, well, I think one of the best testaments for us is when a Park Forest business or a Matheson business or a University Park business tells another business, this is a great place to do business in and helps us recruit the new businesses that they stay. And um, we have low turnover in our industrial park and in our business community. And I think that's a testament to retention and loyalty. That's awesome, Sandra. So Sandra Zellner, Park Forest, Illinois, Roy Witherow, Lake Zurich, Illinois, Michael Murtis with Arlington Heights, Illinois, Select Chicago, reach out to us, please. Thank you. Thank you.